You are tuned in to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings, and welcome to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. I'm your host, Lance White. Tonight, my guest is Mirabai Devi. Mirabai is an international spiritual teacher, conduit for healing, author, and the founder of the Mirabai Devi Foundation. Mirabai has produced seven CDs of her inspiring talks and guided meditations, in addition to authoring Samadhi, Essence of the Divine, a book of short texts, and meditations describing her experiences of deep absorption in the divine. She is also a frequent guest on radio and television programs throughout the globe. In February 2012, the film Living in the Light premiered. Guided by Neil Donald Walsh, Living in the Light is a powerful documentary that explores new spiritual insights into the true nature of our existence. Set in the idyllic islands of Hawaii, Living in the Light addresses pressing issues of modern life, dealing with fear, understanding traditional belief systems, and how they may help or hinder us, pursuing happiness, interpreting the true nature of consciousness and divinity, and ultimately discovering what needs to be done to experience enlightenment. So, let's meet Mirabai and find out more about her journey here now. Hi Mirabai, how are you? Namaste, Lance. I'm doing wonderfully well, thank you. How are you? Uh, well, I'm I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Having you know, me on your show tonight. It's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad you're working on yourself. Yes. Well, it's a full time job. <laughs> it is a full time job, and it would be for everybody if they knew how to do it. Yes. Yes. Well, I love listening to you on your show with uh, Lilu, and. Um, uh, just uh, found so much that resonated there. And I thought maybe, um, are you in Hawaii right now? No, You're I'm actually in, in Southern California. I'm oh. on tour. Um, I'm I'm right in the uh, last two weeks of my tour, and currently I'm in Southern California in San Diego. Oh, oh that's where I, the area where I was born. I'm oh. In Northern California, but uh, um, I was oh, great. Thinking, Maybe we could talk a little bit about your background, um, some of your childhood experiences that brought you to where you are today. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, well, yes, you are correct. I do live in on the island of Kauai, and it mm. is idyllic. It's a paradise mm. island. And uh, I go out on tour for about six months out of the year and work with people to help them, and then I come back home and enjoy paradise. So <laughs> mm. hopefully I share it with the world. When I travel, I bring that. Kauai spirit everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. And um, what would you like to know about my childhood? Do you have any specific questions? Well, um, you had difficulty with some uh, metaphysical experiences that you had um, that were different than the ordinary. And uh, yes, I was that's true. That, you know, there are so many kids today that are coming in with special abilities and with different perspectives, uh, direct, uh, more directly from source that uh, it might be helpful for them to hear that uh, they're not uh, unique, that this is something that's happening and that you, um, uh, that they're all, the experiences are all different, but they're here for a reason and a good reason. Great. Thank you. That was very helpful, Lance, to point me in that direction. Yeah, the, I would say that I was an indigo child uh -huh. and that there's a lot of indigo children, crystal children, and uh, children that are awakening today that are more in white light, that are more connected with, you know, the awareness of things like computers and the Internet and just psychic abilities and that kind of stuff. I definitely was born um, in a very connected state to the divine. Mm -hmm. and uh, I, I do help people that have special kids to be able to understand where their children are coming from spiritually because through my own experiences, and I can certainly recognize a light worker when I see one, and a lot of the kids coming in are light workers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I had some very high experiences as a child 
um, probably not uncommon to others, you know, astral travel, uh, interplanetary travel in dream state, astral state, uh, all the time actually in dreams and working on other realms and other dimensions, having angels and uh, divine masters and light beings appearing to me from three years old uh, through to uh, seven years old particularly and a little bit past that age, thinking I could fly, believing I was ancient mm. and um, not really having a normal uh, awareness of the world. And then I got caught up in trying to be like everybody else mm. from seven through till about six, 16, 17 and that very tender age when you're mm. really kind of, um, you know, trying to figure out your uh, your adulthood that's starting to dawn and, you know, whatever you want to call it, adolescence and so forth, I shifted into uh, a big life change when I was mm. 17. I sort of suppressed and then I woke back up at 17, 18 and became a vegetarian started astral traveling again and then I um, my psychic abilities opened up and I started moving into empathic states feeling the suffering in the world and wanting to help and then I began my um, my um, oh I'm sure similar to you you know channeling of information downloading mm -hmm. volumes of information within from the inner light and from the inner guides and inner teachers and really started to uh, formulate uh, a direct study, what I, what I call dictation, and uh, just writing down guidance and listening to guidance and following uh, inner uh, states, higher states of consciousness, mm -hmm. inner vision states, connecting to higher beings um, that are non-physical, and that kind of thing, and then moving my own vibration from um, more of you know, the astral into the upper realms where I was working with very, very high frequencies of light. And that was from 17 to 22. Mm, wow. And at 22, I went into a fully awakened state that lasted for eight weeks that I call unity consciousness, mm. where I unified with the divine um, for eight weeks. And after that, I didn't know if I was going to be able to come back and be human again. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have any. I didn't. I didn't have any individual self or any uh, individual awareness. I was completely merged into the light and into the uh, the body of the universe, and uh, was in that state of uh, universal knowledge pouring through and mm -hmm. spontaneous and direct miraculous healing gifts pouring through and mm. uh, was in a unified state with the divine beings and so forth and finally took about eight weeks to slowly start to enter into my body. took about four years after that to see a solid form because everything was vibrating light. Oh, yes, yes. And nothing, nothing, felt, uh, nothing felt solid. Everything was vibrating light and light frequency and uh -huh could see people's thoughts and energies and thought forms and past, present, and future lives, all of that kind of thing, you know. So it took <laughs> four years till I, could, till I could learn to walk in multiple wo worlds uh, simultaneously with the physical world. I'm sure you can relate. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not to the extent that you've had, but yes, I do, I do relate. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. And, and so I, I'm sure you've, You've had a chance, or you will have a chance, to watch my videos on YouTube that are on my website. I have a YouTube channel on my website, and it kind of talks about how I I sort of thought it was like it really was a conscious near death experience. Although I didn't have anything to cause death, I, I sort of left my body and merged with the light, and then got told what my work was on mm -hmm. the planet, what my mission was, and then I came back to fulfill that mission, and that's really why I came back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, some people uh, have the feeling that that is uh, the nature of the shift that will be occurring for many people, uh, that it won't be a conscious, that it won't be a death, a, a physical death, that it's going to be a, a uh, reintegration into the higher realms um, that, that's coming. And, of course, it might be, it might be many things. <laughs> Yeah, the planet is ascend herself is ascending, as you know, and so humanity, her divine mother's children are ascending with her, and all of us are being called to move into 
um, a state of oneness or unity consciousness or at least deepen our spirituality to vibrate in the frequency of love and mm-hmm. to relinquish and release all fear mm-hmm. because we can't be in love and in fear at the same mm-hmm. time. And as we make the transition into the new world and into the new paradigm, we are required to upgrade our frequencies to be able to do that. And so obviously, um, you know, we're going to be doing that on a massive scale. And at the same time, there will be many, many people who will leave their physical bodies and leave the planet. Mm-hmm. But those, those souls that will do that will only be the ones that have contracted to do so. Mm-hmm. And um, I've already noticed that's been happening. And um, the majority of us are going to stay here and do our work and be a part of this monumental shift. It's a very exciting time for the planet. And uh, we have signed up to be here to help with this transition into the new paradigm, and that's why we were born. And that's why many of the children that were born now are prepared to help with that shift Mm -hmm. and uh, are light workers. And many adults are light workers, too, and are getting ready and have been helping with the with the change and the shift. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's happening. Yes. Um, uh, do you see the, a uh, massive resistance on the, uh, form, in the form of uh, those, those aspects that are attempting to uh, slow down or reverse the process that's occurring? Yeah, well, first of all, the old paradigms and old structures are holding on, gripping for dear life, you know, mm-hmm. to stay in their existent forms. And unfortunately, you know, we we have to help them, too, to make the transition because the easier, you know, it is, is to, the easiest path is really just to let go and go with the flow and allow mm-hmm. the change to occur instead of fighting against it or resisting it. Mm-hmm. And I think that we don't just see it in the old paradigm structures, but we also see it in people that are just fighting that within themselves, you know, that are having a hard time letting go of their own old paradigms and their own old mm-hmm. fears and old belief structures that no longer serve them during this time. So it's Definitely what a lot of my teachings are catered towards is helping people make that shift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also uh, moving out of the head and the mind into the heart. Yes. <laughs> well, the spirit dwells in the heart, so right. we have to let the, the heart lead us, guide us, right. and direct us so that we can be operating from our spirits instead of our rational minds, which are really just programmed and they're programs that can be changed, mm-hmm. you know, and so we don't want to be operating from an old operating model. It's an old, slow computer. <laughs> yeah, <we're> no kidding. <laughs> it definitely needs a reboot or two or three. <laughs> exactly. We need to upgrade the software and the oh, hardware, yeah. and that's and part of what we're doing to change the conditioning now. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and that's part of changing the frequency. You know, we're activating the DNA, and uh, activating the, the cellular memory and the intelligence within the DNA so we can activate the, our light bodies, which basically means turning the body into a body of light, which is the spiritual consciousness, the spiritual awareness, vibration of love, peace, joy, harmony, unity, oneness, you know, mm-hmm. and loving kindness, compassion, all of those things that are already in us as light beings. We're just remembering who we are now. And so as in the process of doing that, we have to release the old programs that no longer serve us because we've been programmed through our conditioning. Mm -hmm. Most of us think we are our programs, and we're not our programs. Mm -hmm. And so we need to change those old programs and upgrade them, which which is really where people get to realize that it's a whole change in identity, which is which is important and necessary. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. That we're we're not our jobs, we're not our material possessions, we're not our relationships, we're not our bodies and so on. We're not our finances, we're not right. male, we're not female, yeah. we're not our yeah. egos, not our personalities. And and that's the thing, the soul is both male and female. Mm-hmm. And the soul can take on in any incarnation, male or female. And so we have the we have the male within us and the female within us. All of us, whether we're men or women. And that brings me to, you know, the divine feminine needs to be restored on the planet now and is coming back into balance. So all of us are needing to unlock that uh, more nurturing, receptive aspect of ourselves that, you know, that really knows that we deserve to be loved and that can let love in and let abundance in and let these new beautiful paradigms of goodness 
mm. into ourselves, that we're not operating from those old paradigms of lack consciousness and so forth. Mm-hmm. And that's part of that's part of bringing the divine feminine back on on the earth is bringing her back within ourselves. Mm-hmm. So that's good. That's also a huge new development and shift that needs to happen for uh, this evolution of of consciousness, this yeah. global awakening in humanity. Yeah, it, it seems that there's <clears throat> that the the patriarchy has pretty much uh, run things for about the last five thousand years and um, has kind of suppressed the divine feminine. So it seems that once that uh, starts to break down, there will be a major release of that that um, energy. Yeah, and the energy was the energy was kept suppressed and um, and dominated. So that's why we had so many wars on the planet, and so mm-hmm. much poverty on the planet, and so much starvation on the planet, and such a huge. Uh, surge in greed and mm. uh, domination, power control, and so forth. And that was because when you when you um, look at the when you look at the structure, you know, a woman and her qualities: the mother, the nurturing of the children, the nurturing of the husband, you know, the compassionate heart, the loving kindness. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, all of those qualities need to come back in on a global scale in our countries, in our governments, in our nations. In our in our society, in our civilization, so that's very very important that that consciousness of the divine feminine is restored, so that we can see uh, the restoration of nature and the environment and our planet as we move into the um, the new earth. Mm-hmm. You know, the new earth, the golden age that that we're stepping into now, which is something that we're heralding and we're also bringing in. Do you see that happening over the next uh, year or two, the 2012 and 2013, or um, you know? five years? I'd say over the next five years, it's going to be it's going to be every year. It's going to increase. We'll definitely see a, a substantial shift around 2012, 21st of December. Mm-hmm. We'll see a substantial shift in the energies. I mean, no one really truly knows exactly what's going to happen. Right. I mean, the Mayans will say that there'll be three days. And three nights of darkness, and that there's a complete uh, that there's a complete new earth that comes in, um, and that some of the old uh, people walking in fear and in darkness won't survive the shift. Uh But but I think really it's going to be there will be a momentous uh, uh, change on the 21st of December. But I think it's been happening in increments Mm -hmm. over the last three or four years, and it's going to be happening in increments for the next five years. We're just going to see the light and the higher frequencies coming in more and more so, and we'll see more and more of the old paradigm structures falling mm-hmm. over the next five years. Well, that will be a relief to uh, a great majority of people who are, are suffering as a result of the uh, the old paradigms uh, not quite crumbling yet. Yes, exactly, and I think that it won't be as quick as we yeah. as we expect it to be because yeah. things have been so swung. You know, the pendulum has been so swung in the opposite direction mm-hmm. that to bring the pendulum back into balance is going to take quite a bumpy ride <laughs> and <laughs> and a, quite a series of incremental increasings in this high frequency energy, and then some more episodes of darkness and so forth coming out on the planet and being released. Until we see the, um, you know, there's so much cleansing. If you just think about the amount of cleansing that there is to be done on the planet, yeah. just energetically, environmentally, physically, mm-hmm. you know, mentally, there's so much cleansing that needs to occur. I mean, that in itself is going to take some time to turn around and definitely can turn around as we co-create that and choose that. Mm-hmm. But it's going to take more, you know, thank goodness we have the spiritual support from the light coming into the planet to be able to do that because we're going to need all the strength we can mm-hmm. have and muster to change all those old paradigms. Mm-hmm. And that is yeah. increasing, is it not? The, uh, it is hugely increasing. Yeah. Go ahead. And we'll continue to, uh, over time, as we're able to, uh, to uh, work with that energy. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, huge parts of my trainings are about learning how to work with that energy because I think for a lot of people, it's destabilizing. You know, people are not used to these higher frequency energies and currents and so forth. And so 
it can be very destabilizing in, in the sense that people don't really know what's going on or why it's going on or how it's happening like it's happening. And so I think we'll be ed- I think uh, a lot of my work now is, dedica- is dedicated towards education, mm-hmm. spiritual education, just educating people. These are the changes. This is what the new paradigm looks like. This is what the new frequencies feel like. Here's how you adjust. Here's how you work on yourself. Here's how you do the inner work to clear out your own old paradigms. Here's some spiritual tools and practices that are very practical that you can do mm-hmm. to help you go through this transition and that will help everybody around you also. And there's so many, um, there's so many uh, that are uh, readily available to us now that weren't available to us before, that we didn't utilize before, mm-hmm. and that make that huge, vast difference. And obviously, you know, there's systems that work across the board for everyone, and then there's things that are unique to each individual mm-hmm. also that they need to practice on a practical level as a practical tool in their in their life toolkit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then as one changes, the collective changes. Because the inner universe is represented within every individual. Mm-hmm. So every individual is the microcosm of the macrocosm. Mm-hmm. And that's what's so beautiful is that the Vedas actually teach us, the Vedas are the um, ancient scriptures of the um, of the yogic tradition, the tradition of yoga, Mm -hmm. and the spiritual metaphysical side behind yoga, they actually teach that. Mm. And that's what's so so amazing is that this ancient knowledge is now completely current and relevant. Mm, Yes, that's wonderful, I I think, to to have it be (coughs) revitalized and, and refreshed and renewed. Yeah, because if you look at the teachings for the Golden Age, they're exactly the same as the uh, mystical, and you uh-huh. call yourself a, a mystic. They're exactly the same as as the mysticism of all of all the mystics of of age of the ages, you uh-huh. know, of old. Yeah. They've all they've all talked about this these teachings that are actually completely relevant, cur- you know, current and and. Um, appropriate to exactly what's happening right now, what's occurring and taking place on our planet in 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, what about the planetary alignments? Now, uh, tomorrow <clears throat> we have, um, I know some people seem to be uh, worked up or concerned or excited about the uh, solar um, eclipse and the alignments with the galactic center. Um, do you pay much attention to the uh, galactic um, alignments as they come along or I do. I do pay attention to the galactic alignments. It tends to be, every time there is a galactic alignment, there tends to be um, another frequency, high frequency of energy that comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like another download, mm-hmm. you know. And, and my experience is that it's not just coming into the Earth, but it's also coming into the other planets also. Mm-hmm. So every planet's hotting up, heating up. Every planet is being downloaded with these high frequencies of light, but it just seems that all the focus from the other, you know, the intergalactic focus from the galaxies and from the other planets is on Earth right now. It's holding a huge focus because it's it's such a monumental um, leader in consciousness and in change and in, in possibilities, and everybody's watching to see what's going to happen <laughs> on the Earth. It's like the latest drama on TV, and you know, everybody's watching the Earth to see what's going to happen. You know, what are they going to choose? What are they going to choose, you know, with their own free will? And I, I feel all the ETs here watching and waiting and holding space, and all the light beings are here watching and waiting and holding space, and, you know, everybody's kind of here watching the show. And it's a huge, it's a huge, it's a huge time. I mean, I think with the eclipse tomorrow, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I think with the eclipse tomorrow, we're going to see another shift in the energies. Uh huh. Yeah, so it seems that way. Yeah. And then there's a Venus transit, I understand, and uh... there is, yes, there is a Venus transit tomorrow, and so forth. So yeah, I mean, there's there's information that's available. I mean, the in definitely in the Vedic. Tradition, they talk about um, not going out during the eclipse oh. and just and just staying inside mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. during that time and not exposing yourself to the energies because they're pretty powerful energies and they mm-hmm. can be very um, destabilizing. So it's said that it's good just to um, not look into the eclipse and not mm-hmm. to also step outside mm. um, during that time and just let it pass. Mm. And I definitely think that it's going to be a positive. Uh, frequency shift. I mean, there's 
There's talk about uh, communication and relationships being affected and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And and yet, um, I think that the all round, you know, all in all, it's going to be a positive frequency shift that we're going to see on the planet. It does feel that way to me, also. And Good, I'm glad. Yeah. You know, of course, there will be people who uh, are programmed to see things in the other direction. So, um, but I think those of us that are looking at uh, the shifts and the energies are are pretty much seeing the same thing, that this is a positive, uh, these are positive shifts, uh, including the solar flares, which are uh, adjusting our consciousness as well. Gosh, aren't those tremendous, those mm-hmm. solar flares? They're affecting us so much. Yeah, there's a yeah. tremendous amount of, of frequency coming in and... and uh, yeah, I mean, the sun in itself is a guardian and a light being, you know, and is a home to many light beings that inhabit the the sun. And so that's, that, all the solar flares that are coming out and hitting us and so forth is, is major in affecting us right now and also is, is affecting the frequencies on our planet. So we've, we've got a lot of, a lot of things going on, planetary alignments and so forth. Yes, well, I, I'm surprised that I made it to 2012. I, <laughs> all these years I kept talking about it, and here we are in it right now. So um, I'm just amazed to, to be sitting here, you know, talking to you on the telephone, live over the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I think everybody's kind of feeling that way. And, you know, it's just I I have been kind of blown away to see that you know some some friends of mine you know that are powerful teachers and light beings and that hold communities and so forth have left the planet or are leaving the planet. Mm. And yeah, I have noticed that change. Mm. And yep, and I've also noticed that um, the people are leaving very suddenly. Also, you know, friends and things. Um, clients of mine. I don't know if you've noticed that. Uh, to some extent, yes. Yeah. Yes, it just seems yes. like there's a portal open right now for mm-hmm. people to go if they want to go and um, if they're complete with their contracts and that mm-hmm. kind of thing, you know. It makes so, me wonder how many are helping from the other side and or how many. Oh, um, lots. Uh, yeah. Lots. Yeah. Lots of helping from the other side. I think that there's um, that the portal's open. They're helping souls move through. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. Helping souls move through into the other, you know, into the other worlds and stuff. Well, you know, the um, Mayan prophecies and some of the channels are also saying that um, there are other planets uh, that have been prepared for uh, people who are leaving at this time and want to go and evolve on other planets right now. Um, even parallel Earths and so forth. Mm. Yeah, that want to go and evolve through um, through other systems and other outcomes, and that those who stay here on this Earth, I've heard that through the Mayans, I've heard that through the Hopis, I've heard that through various channels, and that those who are staying here are the ones who are choos- truly choosing to walk in love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in the higher frequencies. In Have you heard frequency. about that too? Yes, yes. And uh, that we're moving forward. We're not. There's no backward movement. We're moving forward into the birth of something new that hasn't occurred before. So it's not like we're returning to something that we were, um, but we are actually, uh, in a sense, being condensed uh, from where we were into uh, a totally new um, a frequency beyond the fourth and. And we're likely, you know, starting around the fifth. Yes, the fifth, the fifth of. The fifth, well, just the fifth density. Oh yes, yes. I see what you're saying. Yes, I think that's very exciting. You know that we're moving into the fifth dimension, and I feel like that a lot of the third dimensional. Um, paradigm has worked on the earth for a long time, but it certainly doesn't work for us anymore. I mean, I just don't see how it can continue to work, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Um, It just, I mean, it served its purpose. The way that I see it is that um, there was, you know, models, the old paradigm model was a a model of suffering, a model Mm -hmm. of scarcity, a a model of lack, Mm -hmm. a model of fear, Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and certainly a tremendous amount of domination and control mm-hmm. and ignorance. Yeah. And the new paradigm, you know, is a paradigm of knowing that we are the light right. and stepping into being the light and yeah. being the love and radiating such light and such love to everyone and everything all around us that we transform everything, you know, through that presence, that divine mm-hmm. presence, recognizing that we are that, you know, we are that light, we are that love, we are that divinity, mm-hmm. and that we are these incredible divine beings. And it's just amazing to me how we were able to live hiding that, hiding that here on this planet for so long, mm. and only so few people awakening and realizing that. And now I see that awakening you know, the awakening of the Christ consciousness within Mm -hmm. going to the masses. You know, I really don't see that there's just going to be one avatar or great master for our time. I see that that everybody Mm -hmm. in the collective humanity is being given the invitation Mm -hmm. to awaken to their divinity, to the Christ consciousness within, you know, to Mm -hmm. to the avatar within, the divine self. Mm-hmm. The divine, the divine incarnation. Avatar, really, to me, is the divine incarnation, mm-hmm. and that, and that, you know, some people have become so removed from that, so far away from that. It's like Saibata said, you know, the only difference between you and me is that I've realized that I am divine, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's really, that's really it, right there. Is more people waking up to realize that they are divine and stepping into their divinity. Um, on a massive scale, and then we'll see we'll see a, a real a, we'll see a real global change. But it's going to take time. I mean, so many are still unwilling and reluctant and resistant to that. So, you know, we're doing we're really we're really here here to help support the souls who want to go home to the light within themselves. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, we can't force anybody to wake up. Everybody has to wake up in their own time. But there is an energy that's facilitating the invitation for people to move from, you know, three to five, third dimension to fifth dimension now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, of course, it, it helps dramatically if one turns off the television set. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting you say that because I've started a global movement so? <laughs> called, Prayers for, called Prayers for Humanity and Mother Earth. Oh, and nice. what we do... Yes, and what we do is a group of people gather together on the phone from all over the world, uh-huh. and I lead a global uh, light meditation and a global prayer session, just purely uh-huh. focusing on pouring light into Mother Earth, into areas and regions and situations that where there's crisis um, or difficulty. And and there's so many, it's unbelievable. I wasn't aware because I never watched the news. I never paid attention to any of that stuff because it's so negative. Right. But then when I when I started researching all of that now, just for the pure intention of pouring light into it and having a group of people come together and raise consciousness and and pour light into it and send healing and transform these situations, I'm really becoming aware of what's going on on our planet, and it's it's really just quite unbelievable. It is, isn't it? <laughs> people have I think people have no idea, you know, oh. to the extreme of what's occurring, and and it's it's natural that people would just tune out, shut down, and not want to know, because it's so overwhelming when you look into what's going on. Yes, it is. It is, it, it is terribly overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we we should start a positive news station where we can report all the positive change that's occurred yeah. from all the prayer work and all the light work and all the mm-hmm. healing and all the golden light and the white light and the creative visualization of what the new earth looks like and all the changes that we're uh, creating we should create a positive news station of all the disasters that have been averted through prayer and light tr- and through light. Yeah, I like that. Yes. Yes, that's what my intention is. Oh, that's wonderful. And you know, it wouldn't uh, be a bad idea for all of the the various light workers that are doing independent work, such as yourself and and various others uh, that uh, we're familiar with and know and and have heard of, uh, to work together as well to to not feel uh, that we're um, uh, doing different tasks that we're actually aligned on the same in the same purpose that we're unified. So I see a time coming when yes. we will the light will those of the light that are doing this work will start to interact with others of the light and create all kinds of synergistic uh, positive effects that will exponentially shift the planet in a positive direction. 
Absolutely. I would love that. And I, I, I actually visualize that during the um, Global Healing Teleconference once a month. We visualize all the light workers around the earth holding hands in a giant circle. Mm-hmm. A circle of light workers, a circle of humanity, a family of humanity, and we visualize mm-hmm. us all working together to pour light into the earth together oh, with the, beautiful. the light beings and the masters and so forth and the angels. And that, that has been a, a, a common, strong intention and visualization of mine. Well, and then one thing that you've done also, uh, you might want to talk about a little bit, uh, another one of my guests, Neil Donald Walsh, uh, you did uh, Living in the Light, which is a, co- a collaboration, um, uh, a movie. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? And what that Yes, covers? I'd love to. That was okay. a wonderful collaboration. Thank you for asking. <laughs> so Neil Donald Walsh and myself, and mm-hmm. Ganga G mm-hmm. and Eli, her husband, and mm-hmm. um, Elijah Ray, who's a light being and a, a singer that channels the angelic realms through his music, mm-hmm. and Panash Desai, um, were all interviewed uh, in the movie Living in Light. And that movie is really based on uh, being the light. What does it mean to be the light? What is the new paradigm? What are the old paradigms? How do we change? How do we bring more light into our bodies, into our lives? How do we radiate the light? How do we uh, drop fear? What is fear? And what what is the old paradigm? All that kind of thing. And it's very interesting to actually hear each one of the speakers and teachers in the film Mm. sharing their perspective because Mm. all of the perspectives are actually slightly different but very Mm. similar. Mm -hmm. And yet none of us have actually physically worked together or met each other until now. And so I actually, myself, speaking for myself, I'd been teaching these teachings for the past 20 years all over the planet and um, sharing uh, the awakening with people and getting people prepared for the golden age and for the earth changes and for the ascension process and so forth and then talking about the old paradigm and the new paradigm and preparing people for this. And then here I am hearing everybody else talking about it on the film, and they all know about it too, and they're all talking about it too, and they're all out there teaching it, and it just showed me once again that that knowledge is so universal, and that if we ch- if we align ourselves mm-hmm. with our inner source, the source of our being, which is the divine light, then then we all have access to universal knowledge. We all have access to the answers. We all have access to guidance. We all have access to the truth. Mm-hmm. And that's available for all of us. And it's just that those of us that are teachers mm-hmm. um, and mouthpieces for the light are out there, you know, preparing humanity and helping humanity make its transition into the light, into the fifth dimension. But everybody can actually, and many people call me from interviews and so forth and say, I'm ha-, you know, they, they know about it. They've heard about it from within. Their guidance is telling them or... You know, they've heard about it from other teachers and so forth. So I think it's getting out there now, which is very, very cool. Mm, yes, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, the light is definitely expanding exponentially. and um, It is. It, it, it said that there's a hundredth monkey uh, theory that uh, could uh, kick into place soon, that, uh, you know, what one knows, we all know. And... Um, it does seem that there's a common thread that sometimes I'll be talking to somebody that I haven't even uh, known very well and we'll be talking about the same thing and they know just as much about it as I do. You know, they're pulling from the collective field, so it's it's quite startling sometimes to I, hear somebody. I've know. been finding the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> even there you go. Yeah, you at the grocery store, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, God is at the grocery store, too. Yes, <laughs> you can't exactly. Open. Exactly, um, yes. And and the Upa Guru mm-hmm. is a good, that's a good word, Upa Guru. Uh-huh. It's the um, spirit of the Guru, which is life itself. Okay. The, the, the Guru as life itself, that uh-huh. is the teacher. Guru means the teacher that brings you from darkness into light. Okay. And if you look at the Upaguru principle, it's that spirit of the teacher that exists in everything. So it's uh-huh. like when you need to hear an answer, you turn on the radio and the song has the yes. answer. 
Yeah. That kind of thing, you know, it's written yeah. on the bill it's written on the billboards, it's shouting yeah. at you from every angle, you know, it's speaking to you and that's the that's the Upa Guru. God is in the grocery store. So somebody in the grocery store is gonna give you the information that you need to hear or be in resonance with your information because that spirit of life, the teacher, is everywhere in everything. Mm. And it's it's there representing, you know, and that's the beauty, you know, um, uh, that expression that actually Ramdas used that came from an ancient sage that actually said God, the Guru, and the Self are one. Mm. And that's something that's actually spoken about, I think, in Alan Cohen speaks about, I'm sorry, I, I apologize, I meant to actually mention earlier on in the interview that Alan Cohen is in the film with us also, I didn't get oh. to that part. Okay. And he's a wonderful teacher and he actually uh, shares that in the um in the film, and that's a really important point, is that if God, the self, and the guru are one, and they're all within us as the self, well, that self is also without in everyone else. Mm -hmm. And so that gets reflected back to us all the time as the mirror. And we're constantly Mm -hmm. getting the teachings from everywhere we go. We can't get away from the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's being reflected back to us, Mm -hmm. which is which is why um, a good teacher is really a mirror. Mm. That reflects back to you what you need to see and work on within yourself. Mm-hmm. That's how mm-hmm. we grow. Mm-hmm. Just like in relationships, you know, you, you know, I always feel that um, that the spiritual path is really important to be held. You know, the highest form of yoga is uh, is is actually the highest form of union or the highest path of yoga is the path of relationships mm. because the the partner can also teach you and reflect back to you stuff within yourself that you need to look at or deal with or grow through or evolve into and push those buttons and things that other people can't, just like a, just like a guru or a teacher mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. So, it's, so it's really that mirror can come in many different forms. Your child, your child oh, can be yes. you know, the greatest yes, teacher no pushing those buttons. <laughs> in a very direct way. Yeah, the path of the family, you know, family mm-hmm. life. It's very, very important to whatever form we have family life, you know, even if it's our soul family or our partner and, you know, that kind of thing. Our soul family, our partnerships, our, our deepest, most intimate relationships, those are the ones that reflect back to us what a teacher would reflect to us also. So that's very helpful. Mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, we don't want to run away from our pain. We want to face our pain. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the new paradigm is we walk through the fire. We face our fear. Mm-hmm. We face our pain. We walk through it. And on the other side is absolute light. It's absolute bliss. It's absolute love. You know, underneath the fear is the love. Mm-hmm. Underneath the pain is, is the divine self, you know, waiting to embrace you and show you what it is that you needed to listen to in that form of the messenger. Pain mm-hmm. is the messenger. Mm-hmm. In the new paradigm, we're moving out of the old models of suffering and pain mm-hmm. into the new into the new paradigm, which is that we learn through joy. We learn through joy. Mm-hmm. That we bring as much joy into our life as we possibly can, following our passion, following our joy, following our highest excitement, following our feelings, our internal guidance. We align ourselves with the source within ourselves, you know, mm-hmm. especially when we're moving through a Venus transit, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I believe that the Venus transit is scheduled for June 5th or June 6th. Oh, yes, yes. Oh. And so as we're moving through the Venus transit and they're talking about how, you know, that the eclipse is supposed to affect your relationships and your communication and the Venus transit and so forth. All of this is supposed to be um, affecting us, of, you know, all the way through July and all of that and with the planetary alignment. So what do we do? We walk in love. We stay in our heart. We keep an open flow in our communication. We stay connected and aligned with the divine source and all that kind of thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah. People are more agitated right now in general because... The earth herself is shaking, and people are not handling the new frequencies. They're destabilizing in the new frequencies, and that's why we need to ground ourselves and have very practical tools like the forgiveness prayers, Mm -hmm. you know, mantras, uh, meditations, meditating on the light, on the golden light, grounding ourselves physically and that kind of thing. Breath work, detoxifying, cleansing. There's lots of practices, but we need to be on top of our spiritual practices right now to make it through these transitions. Mm-hmm. And 
you have um, most of those uh, that you just mentioned are on your site, are they not? Great. Thanks, Lance. They are. Yeah, they're on my website. The forgiveness prayers are available freely. They're a gift um, channeled uh, from the light by Howard Wills. They're downloaded from the light, the divine light, that he's put out freely into the world, a series of peacemaking prayers that really heal the physical body and also get rid of um, all of our old paradigm belief systems and structures and program us with abundance and divine love Mm -hmm. and they cleanse our family they cleanse our lineage they take disease out of us out of our family out of our dna out of our lineage they align us with the infinite light so those are very important to be doing every day even short versions Mm -hmm. if people can do the long versions those are great those are on the website and then all the others, too. The, the mantras are on the website, mantra practices for removing negative energy, for creating and generating positive energy. Those are actually on my YouTube videos. I believe that there's hundreds of thousands of people that are watching those and doing yeah. them with the videos every day. I've been getting Wonderful. feedback. Wonderful. Yeah. And is this on the site, um, mirabydevi.org? Mirabydevi.org. If you oh, go to yeah. Mirabai TV, which is under media. Oh. Wonderful. The YouTube channel has the mantras and the prayers um, on video, and I, I believe, I don't even remember, hundreds of thousands of people that do them every day watching oh, them on wonderful. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I have to uh, mention I, I saw a beautiful picture of you in the, wa- in the waters of Hawaii with the dolphins. Yes. And I just wanted to ask you, you have such a blissful look on your face. Uh, what did they tell you about? Did they talk to you while you were swimming with them? <laughs> <laughs> they are master teachers, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the dolphins have taught me about many, many different mm. things. I mean, they, they've they taught me. Um, the whales, I swear, I got to swim with humpback whales on Maui mm-hmm. in February. It was such an incredible... I mean, I didn't intentionally swim with them because you're not legally allowed to swim with them oh. except for in um, uh, the Dominican Republic and there's one or two places in the world. But if you get in the water in February in Maui, there's whales everywhere. It's whale soup. <laughs> and they actually impregnate the water with their frequencies. It's like a homeopathic remedy. Wow. And it opens up your psychic abilities, it opens up your third eye, it heals your physical body, it opens you to the celestial sounds, it brings downloads information for you. Oh. And that was my same experience with the dolphins. You know, they blow open your chakras, they infuse them with light, they heal anything in the physical body that needs healing. Uh, they have a lot of interaction. You know, they, they're ETs that are oh. in physical form on our planet, so they oh. bring in a lot of the Pleiadian and the Syrian energies. Oh. And uh, they, they're they very informative. They're record keepers. They hold a lot of information about humanity. Mm-hmm. And so I've, I've been receiving a lot of teachings from them. Is the uh, general outlook uh, positive at this time from uh, our friends in the water? <laughs> I think it's mixed. Mixed? It's very mixed, yeah. I think our friends in the water are are definitely doing their best to help Mm -hmm. on a global level to help awaken humanity and to inspire humanity to wake up. And many of them are losing their lives over it. They're self-sacrificing in a way where, you know, thousands of them are losing their lives on behalf of um, humanity's, um, you know, own ignorance and unconsciousness. And so I think they have... They they come here to help, and then they end up getting killed for it a lot. And, um, you know, I definitely feel that's a, one of our greatest tragedies of our time. Yeah. yeah. And um, I know that the higher civilizations are really encouraging humanity to, to stop killing dolphins and whales because, you know, they want to see us evolve into a more loving consciousness. And these are very high beings that we're killing. So yeah. it's, it's really important to me and to... Uh, other people and other yeah. beings that this changes dramatically on our planet. I would really love to see that change in in my lifetime. Well, I would. I'm totally with you on that one. And uh, thank you. you. Know, it's uh, yes. it's time for humanity to shift away from the the warring and fighting and seeing each other as fragmented and different. And that we what we do to another, we are doing to ourselves, literally. So. Um, uh, it's just Be- time for the foolishness and the childishness to stop. Because the other is our self. Yes. Yeah. And that and that really our greatest self is the totality of all beings. Mm-hmm. And that's 
and then when we start to recognize that, that we're not fragmented or separate, but that everyone right. is ourselves, then we can only treat each other with loving kindness and compassion. Mm-hmm. And that's the global awakening that occurs on the planet mm-hmm. where we move into the fifth dimension. And that's what, you know, me and you and so many of us are really wanting to see happen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in a big way because it's very necessary that we stop, you know, killing our teachers and mm-hmm. killing out our, our our, you know, our dolphins and our whales and, and yes. being so closed, being so closed to, um, to contact with other species and civilizations and yes. eliminating so many, um, natural, uh, species of animals that are going extinct on our planet that are such an important part of life here on Earth well, and so humans. forth. <laughs> including humans. We're including. Ex- extinguishing ourselves with, uh, you know, uh, various uh, atomic nuclear plants and uh, leaks in the ocean and uh, a number of things that, you know, I don't want to bring up because they they sound negative, but uh, these are things that we're doing to ourselves. Exactly. And I know that, um, as I said, you know, there are many um, light beings and ETs and masters that are that are preventing humanity from yes. destroying itself from nuclear warfare. Now it's 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 really and even ending um, nuclear energy mm, on the yes. planet. It's a powerful message that's been broadcasted across the globe and transmitted, and hopefully we'll see more and more countries yes. ending nuclear use of nuclear energy and um, definitely turning away from nuclear warfare permanently. Absolutely. And, and that that will cease to be allowed even. Yes. And and that's something that we're holding a, a lot of prayer vigil for at this time, and I really believe that that will be successful. Yes, I, I am with you on that, and I agree. <laughs> Good, wonderful. I'm so happy to hear that. Well, and I know I, you are. We have just a minute left for you, and I just wanted you to be able to share anything that you'd like to leave the audience with and with uh you know, anything you'd like to uh, share as far as where you are and uh, your website and the rest of it. Well, why don't I start? Thank you so much, Lance, for interviewing me. It's just been a pleasure, oh, a real you. pleasure. It's wonderful to be with like-minded uh, light beings. Yes. You know, it's, it just feels so good and, yes. and, and helpful for others to hear. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to say that my website is actually very simple. It's just Mirabai Davy, and that's with an I R A B A I, and then Davy is D E V I dot org O R G. Okay. And that um, everything that I have been offering in terms of tools is available on the website, as you have shared. The Living in Light movie is available on Living in Light Movie. Dot com. Mm-hmm. That's all one word, and people can order that film and watch it for themselves and share it with their friends and family and communities. We're wanting to spread that film around the world now. Mm-hmm. And as I shared at the Maui premiere of Living in Light is that my life's mission is dedicated to awakening the light in humanity at large and for people to come back home within themselves and realize that we are the light. We are love, and that the only way we can change the world is by changing ourselves. Mm. And the only way to lead is through being a role model. People model our example. Mm -hmm. And if we can be an example of love and compassion and loving kindness and be that peace, be that change, as Gandhi said, be the love, Mm -hmm. and vibrate that into the world, then everybody around us, will follow us, and the world needs more leaders. Yes, yes. And we're stepping into leadership now, and anyone that is hearing the call, if you can start a meditation group, if you can start a prayer circle, if you can start praying for humanity and Mother Earth, perhaps join my conference call once a month, which is completely free, mm-hmm. um, to, to join that prayer vigil that's a global movement that's starting. Pick up an environmental cause and start becoming active in helping to save the planet as we go through this transition into the fifth dimension, I encourage everybody to step up and take action, to love and to love in action. Mm. Wonderful. Well, Mirabai, thank you so much for being on today. I just love your presence, and uh, I'm sure we'll get to talk again sometime soon. 
Thank you so much, Lance. I love your presence, too. I'm a mystic, too, for life. <laughs> so when one mystic meets another mystic, there's mystic, there sure is a lot to talk about. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of light to be radiated. That's Thank right. you so much for having me on your show. I'm oh, so grateful. My pleasure. My All heart right. is full of gratitude and I love. Too. Love. Thank you. Love